One of my favorite topics is indicators of compromise. And I wanna show you what you can do with a custom indicator of compromise inside Microsoft Defender ATP. Well, first let's level set on what an IOC actually is. It's an artifact observed on a network or in an operating system that with high confidence indicates an intrusion. Now there's four different types of IOCs, indicators of compromise, virus signatures, it could be an IP address, it can be a hash of a file, maybe it's a piece of malware. It could also be a URL or a domain that's maybe trying to communicate with a command and control server. Typically IOCs are used to detect, um, for early detection of future attacks. They could also be used during a response to an incident to prevent that attack from propagating and advancing throughout the network. They're usually exchanged between cyber professionals uh, within a given industry. So if you're in financial services, you may understand the types of threats to your industry. And you may want to exchange IOCs with your peers and maybe other firms. Many different ways to use IOCs. Here's an example of how you can apply IOCs to the kill chain model. So for example, when a user goes to launch a phishing email, um, well, if they try to click a malicious attachment, we can block them with a file IOC, or we could prevent them going to a phishing website with a uh, domain IP or URL IOC. We can also prevent that piece of malware from installing, uh, so on and so forth, right? And so these are just some different examples of how you can insert an indicator of compromise into the kill chain to prevent it from further propagating, but also block it, and then of course, give you an alert on that. Now with Defender ATP, there's four different types of custom indicators of compromise. I can have a file hash, which can be used to block malware, ransomware, maybe known attack tools like Mimikatz, for example. Uh, IP addresses, this can block network traffic, maybe to a C2 server. I can block URLs and domains, specific websites, maybe it's a phishing website. And then also I can use certificates uh, to only allow behavior from assigned application or block the use of assigned applications. All right, so now let's jump into Defender ATP and take a look at custom IOCs. Okay, within Microsoft Defender ATP, we're gonna go over to the left side, click on settings, and then down at the bottom under rules, we're gonna click on indicators. And this is where we create our custom indicators of compromise. Now, before I create any, I wanna point a few things out. For each one of these categories, I can import my own. And so I may have a CSV file full of file hashes, or I may have a CSV file full of IP addresses or URLs or domains that I can then import in. So just be aware of that. Now here I've already created a uh, IOC for a hash of a file. Um, this is where I created a text file and using a PowerShell command here, I was able to get the hash of the file and then I uploaded that hash to the system, told to alert and block, give it a name, description, and severity, and then I told it to scope to all devices in the system. And then for IP addresses, I went ahead and added an IP address, and um, I just called this basically a C2 server communication alert. Uh, it's gonna block communication with that IP address, and it's going to create an alert there. And then for URLs and domains, just uh, just playing around here, I create one for youtube.com and uh, it's going to alert and block for that. So now there's a second way to create IOCs. This is the manual method, but what about doing this as part of an investigation? Well, when I'm going through my alerts here, uh, for example, here's an alert for WannaCry. If we open up that alert, and we take a look at the page that uh, was generating the WannaCry alert and scroll down on this alert page. Here we could see the file WannaCry.exe and uh, I could see the hash of that file. Now notice at the top here, I could click on add indicator, which will then go ahead and create an IOC just for that, for that file. So I could create this directly from an alert page as well. So be aware of that. Okay, folks, let's go test this now and watch our IOCs in action. Okay, so let's do the web browsing one first. So we're gonna open up a web browser and go to youtube.com and our custom IOC kicks in and it was indeed blocked. 
And if I go out to the uh, Defender ATP portal, we will then see that be reflected as an alert. So here we can see uh, my custom IOC did kick in and we can see here that uh, the website was tried to browse to and we indeed uh, flagged it and we blocked it. So there you have it. Okay, I'm gonna take a file, I'm gonna drop it on the desktop here and I want you to watch what happens. Windows Defender immediately catches that file and blocks it from being executed. And if I were to launch that file, notice the dialog box that happens here. Uh, so it immediately caught it and blocked it. Now remember folks, this is because this file contained a hash that we blocked as a custom IOC, right? And so if I come in here to my alerts, here I can see where I, I ran this uh, before. And when I open this up, I can see uh, here's the file that we found to be malicious. And if we go into our investigations, here we can see that uh, it found that file and it automatically remediated it, meaning it automatically removed it from the machine. So if we open up our investigation page here and we go to evidence, here we can see that uh, those files I created previously with those hashes were removed by Windows Defender. And if we go to log, we will be able to see that noted here in the log. And there you go, file quarantine by Windows Defender AV. That's because my policy says to quarantine and not, not delete. Okay, well that's, that's it, pretty cool stuff, right? So now if we go back and we go back to our desktop, look, it's gone, it's been quarantined. So really, really interesting stuff. So folks, this is custom IOCs in action. Really cool, huh? Okay, well, you saw what indicators of compromise are. You learned about them in Defender ATP. You even saw it in action. What I'd like for you to go out and do is study more on indicators of compromise. Figure out how you can make them work for you and your environment. All right, folks, if you have any feedback, please let me know in the comments, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.